You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. So training for so many things lately certainly has gone virtual. And uh, how do we continue carrying on the things uh, that, that we've been given, particularly in opportunities to serve in international mission? What are the ways that we've been serving uh, in international mission? Our, our missionaries and, and volunteers who have been serving in, in so many ways, uh, particularly with community health evangelism. What is that? Well, we're going to learn more about that today. Joining us today, Sarah Kanoy. She's community health nurse and educator for East Africa, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Sarah, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thanks for having me. As Stephanie Schulte is the Mercy Medical Coordinator for West and Central Africa in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Stephanie, thanks so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. And Ann Gonzalez is Manager for Short-Term Mission Training and Engagement with the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Office of International Mission. Ann, welcome back to the Coffee Hour. Thanks for having me again. So what is community health evangelism? We've talked about this a little bit in the, in the past. We'd love to share more about this with our listeners. Sure. Community health de- evangelism, also known as CHE by the uh, the initiated, <laughs> it's a <laughs> development ministry. So the you know the ultimate goal is development of the community, but it comes at it in a in a kind of a unique way. For one, the gospel is completely infused in all of the lessons, all of the activities. The, the gospel is shared and, and promoted. And also, um, it's the philosophy of Che is one that is really uplifting and affirming of the local community. Basically, the philosophy is the local community They know what their problems are. They don't need somebody coming in from the outside telling them, here's your problem. And um, they generally probably have a pretty good idea of how, what the solution should be. But sometimes they lack some expertise or some information that might help them reach that solution. And so Che really is very um, affirming of the you know, the abilities and the intelligence and, uh, oh, what am I going to say? Just that the local community, they lead us in what we're going to do. We don't come in and say, here's the answer to all your problems. They lead us in, in how to resolve issues. So you mentioned that that uh, the gospel is part of this. How? Uh, what? What is the role of the local church in community health evangelism? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the places that I've been working quite a bit with Che is in Tanzania. So, for example, in the community there, Kahe, and also a neighboring village, Mawala, Tanzania, the local church has identified uh, specific individuals that they wanted to be trained um, as Che leaders. And so these leaders, they went through a one-week training, and then their role is to go out and teach these lessons. So the lessons are going to be things, um, they could be health-related, such as how to prevent malaria. They could be non-health-related, like maybe um, parenting or resolving conflict in marriage. But each of these lessons are things that these leaders then can go out and teach other individuals in their community. And each of the lessons also connects um, to the gospel. So the local church, uh, kind of as Steph was mentioning, really drives it because they know their community. They know the challenges. Many times they know the solutions. And as um, leaders in their community, we we look to them um, to kind of guide that process. We become more like facilitators and honestly, sometimes cheerleaders uh, as they walk through this process of starting a development ministry. Where have you seen this make community health evangelism make a difference? Yeah, so in um, Kahe and Mawala, Tanzania, it's been really exciting to see women who, uh, many of them, like they may have never graduated the eighth grade 
and they completed this one week long training. And at the end of it, we presented them with certificates affirming them, you are trained in Che, you can go out and train other people now. And it was just the greatest party, probably one of my greatest joyful moments as a missionary on the field, just to see their faces uh, as we were encouraging them to continue this. Since that time, these ladies um, and the local pastor, Reverend Godson and Mwai, they have gone um, to other people in their community and started teaching lessons about preventing diseases and how to stay healthy, uh, nutrition, um, maybe danger signs in pregnancy, all different kinds of topics. And through teaching these lessons, um, you hope to see the health of the community improve. And then also as they share the gospel and invite friends and neighbors to church, you also hope to see the church grow. One really great, um, exciting example to me is that there are about, I've heard of 20 um, additional hand washing stations. Uh, most people don't have running water in their homes, so these are um, handmade uh, hand washing stations that are built outside their homes. Um, and also 10 new latrines, which have been built as a direct result of these women um, out teaching why, why do we need to be washing our hands? Why do we need to be using latrines? And how do we build these types of things um, in our communities? What do you see as opportunities for uh, more places and more ways to do this community health evangelism? Currently, because of all the restrictions in place due to COVID, both Sarah and I are in the U.S. right now. We um, not, have not been able to return to our countries of service yet. So we've been taking advantage of this, this time to offer first and like an introduction to CHE kind of informational session to missionaries. Many, I think most of the missionaries serving in the Africa region have participated and s several in other regions too. And it's a two hour long um, presentation that Sarah and I do to just explain in much more detail than we have in this short time, what is community health evangelism? And now that we've done that with, you know, several missionaries, we are working on an online week-long training of the trainers session, which is what Sarah and I taught to the women in Kahe, Tanzania. But we're going to try to do this online with other missionaries to get them uh, trained in the CHE method. And it's not just the called missionary, but also their wives could be involved in this. It's just an awesome way of looking at things and way of looking at how we can help the communities that we're living in. Um, and then once we're able to travel again, we'll be, uh, you know, we're going to continue our support of the women in Tanzania. We'll continue to lead CHE teaching seminars throughout the region of Africa. So we're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, taking advantage of uh, opportunities offered by Zoom and things like that. And what can you share with us about upcoming training for volunteers? Yeah, so as Steph mentioned, they had sort of initially done this this two hour uh, training on what is CHE for for missionaries. And as I was communicating with folks that had served on the community health team that served in Peru in February, and also just thinking about the future of the sort of health related teams that we offer through the LCMS, Mercy Medical Teams, and the like, I, I asked them like, hey, would we be able to also bring this in for, you know, volunteers to, to learn about CHE. And obviously the first two hour session is not going to qualify people to, to, to do everything, but it does give you a very good sense of what CHE is and maybe even how to work with a CHE lesson that's already, already written. Um, and so if people are interested in being a part of that, they can send us an email at mercyteams at lcms.org. And then we'll have a little survey that people can fill out and provide their availability so we can provide the training at the time that works for the interested folk. Now, we're thinking about this from an international perspective, that this would be an asset to our volunteers that go and serve alongside our missionaries involved in this sort of thing. 
However, there are lots of places in the U.S. that use this in, say, urban ministry or just anywhere where people maybe need to need to learn a little bit more about their health or be empowered that they have the ability to both learn and teach others. Um, so folks, anybody who's interested is welcome to join. So you don't have to be a healthcare professional necessarily to uh, to participate in community health evangelism. No. In fact, I'm a, I'm a DCE and I'm a trained trainer of trainers. Um, and it really is written in such a way that um, things are broken down to, to basic concepts that uh, just about anybody can, can share and learn. So tell us more about the upcoming training. We're anticipating that being available this fall. Is that right? Correct. We're looking at doing the uh, the, the initial two-hour class for volunteers sometime in early September. Um, and then depending on, on response and interest, perhaps there would be some more continuing education available after that. And all this training taking place online, I'm sure, to uh, to accommodate all the challenges we're facing. Correct. All virtually over Zoom. Um, if you can click a link in a web browser, you can you can join a Zoom call. How can we stay on top of uh, opportunities like this and, and continue to learn more about opportunities like this? So for this particular opportunity, if you are interested, please just drop us an email at mercyteams at lcms.org, and we will keep you up to date with all of the information of what's coming up. So simply send an email to mercyteams at lcms.org. That's correct. Easy enough. Our guest today, Sarah Kanoy, Stephanie Schulte, and Ann Gonzalez. Sarah, thank you so much for being our guest on the coffee hour today. Always. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you. Stephanie Schulte, thank you for joining us and uh, glad to have you back on the coffee hour today. Thank you so much. It's always good to talk to you. And Anne, thanks for coming back on the coffee hour today. Hopefully we'll all be back in the office soon so we can <laughs> see each other's faces again. Uh, but thanks for making time for us today. We appreciate it, Anne. It's always a joy. Thanks so much. You're listening to the coffee hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.